Call the meeting to order. Um, Brian, we're just going to go over the town warrant and then vote to approve it if we want to approve it, correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Copy. Look, Brian, let's walk us through it. All right. Article 1, receive the reports of the officers of the town. I'll summarize these. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stop me, okay? If I well, the first one. Four are yep. obligatory. They're all publicly. Article 5. Um, established spending limits of the revolving funds. The one change here is the public hearing revolving fund. Um, we had requested that increase from about 2,500 to 4,000 because we've been having a lot of activity with our planning board and zoning board, especially with some of these marijuana proposals. So that's money in, money out, but we're bumping up close to that limit. So if that was expanded to 4,000, that would be helpful. Good. Yeah. Part six, that's the salaries or compensation adjusted by the 2.5% COLA. Article seven is the enterprise fund budget, 176,732. Is Article somewhere in, in the enterprise budget what they have cash on hand right now? I don't see it, but maybe I'm missing it. No, it wouldn't show up in the operating It would budget. not show up in here? Nope. Okay. Oh, well, this is just their operating budget. No, I understand that, but it's just for, for, for okay, okay, that's fine. Article 8 is the budget approved by the Finance Committee. So that's a total of... And that's with the, with the COLA? That's okay. with, that, yep, that's with the COLA, that's with everything. That's with the adjustments to the police department salaries that we had asked them to do. And did they give a reason why they were, didn't that include CPC? No. Request? It does not. Okay, I'll wait, I'll wait, okay. So let's see, where's, where's the police sign? Public safety. Public safety. safety. So that includes that one percent, correct? Yep. Plus the what? Four thousand. Yep. Plus the, yep. So that's why it went up to seventy-three. Ninety-four. Okay. Nine. Nine. Um, finance committee's proposing to transfer two hundred thousand dollars from free cash to reduce the tax levy. Article 10, the Finance Committee wants to propose the transfer in the sum of $20,000 um, from free cash to the Vehicle Stabilization Fund. Why did they pick vehicle instead of just general? Um, or capital for that matter? Because they're trying to make a conscious effort to um, have money on hand to purchase the recurring vehicle purchases that we make. And is this for a specific, like a police vehicle or a Fire vehicle or? Um, it's, it's a general vehicle account, so it's not restricted to yeah. any specific account. We just created that, it was last year, I think, didn't we? Yeah. Well, we had one specific for vehicles. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the next one's Article 11. These are these are the capital projects. So $7,500 for the um, wood oil furnace for the highway garage. Article 12. $35,000 for the design of the handicapped accessibility improvements at the library. Article 13 is um, $8,000 to pay for the purchase of tires for the front end loader. Article 14 is $10,000 from the vehicle stabilization fund to pay for the, um, the replacement of the pickup truck, that green pickup truck the highway department has from 1992. Article 15, um, $20,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Fund Retained Earnings. That's um, for the purchase of a pickup truck. Article 16 is uh, $13,750. That's for new fire holes from the fire department. Article 17 is uh, $20,000 from available funds for new tile flooring area rugs at the elementary school. 18 is 31,500 to pay for the installation of new siding and other and exterior repairs at the fire station. Do they actually settle yet on what is really going to be the way to do that? Or is, I know they got two different things they weren't very happy with. Yeah. Two different kind of estimates. Um, but there's no progress on that, I assume? 
No, they just have those two estimates, but it hasn't been finally decided which way to go. Okay. okay. So it may be less than this, but we know that those two ways are in this ballpark anyway. Well, if, you, if, you, if there's a need for a new siding, I, I guess I don't feel that's necessary. That's going to the extreme. Yeah. Could but but this, this, this gets to my constant question. There is nobody on CPC. No, no, 18, we're not CPC. No, I know, but I'm sorry. There's no one on the capital planning, really, with the exception of one person. And there's really no one on this board who truly, and, and Fred, correct me if I'm wrong, that you may have expertise that I'm not aware of. But there's no one on, on these boards that truly can make an assessment on the needing need for, for signing. We're, we're just making perhaps really strong educated guests guesses. Yeah. But if I, only we had a building superintendent who could uh, hire someone to, to right. do a just, proper assessment. I, I, I have some experience. I, I, I'm not a contractor, never was, and I, I don't know how to repair buildings, but I know what options are available. And, and I think on the CIPC, we got we have Nicholas Jones on here now. Well, and he knows what he's doing. Obviously. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. But to to spend this much, and, and the only thing that so far they're looking at is is, is new siding, not repairing what's there. And I don't know if you, if no, either, one, one more. either one of, either one of you if it been by it. Stop and look. The front has been already replaced. There's nothing wrong with the front of it by the doors, the side and the back. Very little, if anything, needs to be done. It's the side by Zawinski's. It's got some rust on it, some yeah. holes. And I don't see anything wrong with, with patching. Uh, scraping, painting, if you got rust, surface rust, paint it. I mean, it's, it's like it, your, your house has got peeling paint. You're going to replace all the siding because you got peeling paint. So, can I ask you a quick question? So, um, we're transferring funds paid for this right but we're not specifying that it has to be new siding or exterior painting we're, we're it could be either of those or it could be any other action relative there too who or and who will have to sign off on this in the end so who would like when they actually who how will that decision be made as to which kind of repair it should um, be? in amount in amount of this much then it would typically be um, the select board, if there's a contract that's going to be okay, in, in this amount, it's going to require the, the solicitation of three, yeah, okay, uh, written quotes. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think it's a, it would be good for Keith as the person who's okay, right. overseeing okay. building now to have so, a strong input as to what okay. will be done. Uh, again, if you guys haven't seen it, just stop and come by and take it. a look at it. And, and no, I agree. I, I agree with you. The front looks great. The yeah. other side looks great. Just the side towards the lens. Yes. Yeah. So why not just fix that? But okay. Well, but but we can have that conversation. Yeah. yeah. This so doesn't mean we can't this have that conversation. This puts the ball in our court. Okay. In a right. way. Sets aside money yeah. if we need right. that extreme. Okay. Right. Yeah. And we I, tell tell John that that's the way this is being interpreted. I guess. Yeah. Or set up. For Yep. Purpose. Okay. Uh, Nineteen, fifteen thousand dollars paid for installation of mini splits for heating and cooling at the Waitley Elementary School. Article twenty. This is the borrowing authorization for up to two hundred twenty thousand dollars for the um, design and construction of the pumping station to connect the, the uh, two water systems. Okay. Twenty one is um, eighty seven thousand dollars. From available funds, general stabilization fund, pay for the costs associated with upgrading the pumping station so that it can be used for fire extinguishment purposes in the center of town where we have four municipal buildings. What will that leave us with in stabilization? Um, that will leave us with 267,000. So shy of five percent, south of five percent. Yep. It's in stabilization. Free cash, we won't know station. until it's certified, but it's in a similar range, at least maybe more. Free cash right now, um, with all of these transfers, with everything in here, we'll have about 290. Okay. Okay, so 290 yeah. in free cash. So something similar. So, to so, so but, but actually, to that point, Joyce, so 290. 
with just north of two months to go in the fiscal year. So, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know if it, whether they've talked about this, but I would not be opposed to taking, you know, $25,000 of that free cash, because that's a good free cash number, uh, more than we usually go into the last two months of the, of the fiscal year with and taking 25 of that and, and putting it into stabilization. But it's a little late yeah. to put that in this town meeting, right? Because we need this warrant tonight. We do, I mean, we can put it in, we can put it in a special town meeting, we can put it in, in, in yeah. any time we want. But yeah, yeah, we, no, but we can't won't. go away. We, but, well, it, but we can't until November. Free, so cash, that's, free cash will. We won't have access to the free cash post July 1st. Correct. So it'd have to be a special time meeting in June. Right. Which we likely will have. Will we? We, we almost every year have had a mm. special time meeting it's, in June. It's, it's hard to say. But it's not a, it's not unheard of to have. Yeah. Okay, that's what I would strongly encourage them. Yeah. Why why do we want to do that? Because stabilization I feel should have closer to seven, eight, nine percent of a ratio to the general operating. Uh, I, I, I worry that that just over two hundred thousand dollars is is not sufficient stabilization funds for comfort level in case something happens. That rainy day fund is really important. So so that free cash will you're right, it will it will not be available from July first until mid October sometime in October. Right. So, so July, August. I, I, I just and, and, and I don't want to wait that long for a for a, for a special town meeting to beef up stabilization. That's me. I'm just one person. But yeah, let's tee that up with finance and see okay. if we can do that. Okay. Uh, Twenty-two. The twenty thousand dollars spent uh, for the Whitley two hundred fiftieth anniversary celebration. This is a recurring request they have up until the yeah. up until the uh, yeah. Did they contact you? They wanted to be able to move that one so that they could say something about what their plans are. So far, I told them to contact you if they wanted me to want to move to September. Uh, okay, no one's talked to me yet. Okay. This well, is yeah, the so second. This is the second year. Yeah. This. yeah. Okay. So heads up then. So. <laughs> Uh, 23, sum of uh, $4,800 from available funds to pay for the health insurance plan change reimbursements. 24, $5,000 from available funds to pay for the design and engineering of Chestnut Plain Road and Sidebox. 25, so this is Frontier Regional School District. Um, in talking with uh, Darius and Town Council, there's actually no appropriation that needs to be um, voted on by the towns that this year we need to authorize the debt. We need to, we need to, the statute's written that, that we have 60 days to express our disapproval of their debt authorization. Typically it's just presented in a typical warrant article. So we would need an affirmative vote to defeat this article and for that debt to be, uh, the debt authorization to be why is this only majority vote but the debt for the uh, water because it's there's no there's no actual money it's just authorization to borrow it's not uh, well we're borrowing we're not borrowing for okay. water Be because that's the the statute uh, chapter 71 16d when the town approves the borrowing authorization of a regional school district okay. it's just a majority vote okay I think it is odd that we can authorize them to borrow, but we don't have to authorize our well, potential payment. But that's just because it's in the next fiscal year that we would be paying. Exactly. Right. They don't know. They don't know exactly what our capital, our, our capital assessment will be because they haven't borrowed. Yeah. And then talking with Darius, it, it will likely it won't be in FY20. Could be in 21. There's a possibility it could be in mm. um, 22, depending on what happens with retirements and. How quick they're able to fill positions okay. at the school. Um, the CPA appropriations, uh, Article 26, 
Um, these are the these are the appropriations into each of the buckets, and the last one you see is for the uh, payment for the town hall loan well, debt service of forty three thousand um, dollars. Twenty seven, forty five hundred dollars to restore the advertising backdrop curtain. Um, oh, by the way, the historical society needs mounting on the town hall stage. Article twenty eight, we should pause for this one. Um, is uh, $10,300 for CPC funds for the restoration of the sort of 1891 historic safe, which is located in the, uh, the west entrance of the town hall. Um, it's recommended by the CPC. It's not recommended by the Finance Committee, and it's recommended by the Historical Commission. Why did they recommend against it? Um, they don't see the value in it. Yeah, I think it's, it's awful expensive for what they're doing. And yeah, looking looking at the proposal, yeah, I think there's what 80, 80 hours they're going to spend on its touch up and, and doing something. I'm not sure of the, the pictures that are on the doors, inside and outside doors. But you're only going to you only have access to two sides of the safe, the front and the top. The rest of it. It's behind walls, so you're not gonna, and you're not gonna take it out of there. It would be awful difficult to, to move it, to paint the rest of it. And, and then I, I don't, I don't know what they're gonna use it for. Well, probably not to store anything of value, but you're gonna just leave the doors open for people to look at, I guess. It, I mean, I don't have the option to ask the CPC and the Historical Commission why they recommend in favor of it. I think that it is a good value for the money. Um, so I don't take their recommendation lightly. Um, I, I would like to suggest that we treat that 10 3 in a similar fashion to when we were treating the north of 31,000 for the siding. We're just appropriating uh, the transfer. Um, we can bring in. The historical commission and ask them the rationale for that 10-3 and then if it's not used uh, and, and again I'm guessing they can go ahead and do it but let's do a little due diligence after we approve the appropriation and, and, and see see why but let's not miss the opportunity now because I'm with Joyce I, I respect the historical commission's perspective and I'm sure that the CPC has asked these questions the CPC doesn't doesn't approve monies without asking the right questions and seeking a plan and the whys, etc. Okay. Is the and amount of ten three going to trigger something like we have to sign up on it? Um, Is there going to be three bids required? Or over ten thousand dollars will be if if the yes it'll be uh, the solicitation of free rent. So I, 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 I'll suggest that I would recommend it uh, and then ask the historical commission to come in and, and talk with us about the, the scope of the work, the, the benefits to the town, and why at 80 hours it's 10-3 because at an hourly wage, Fred's right, that is a $100 an hour, and, and then there's a $100 a day for living expenses for the two weeks. It's going to take them so. Okay. So I, I'm good with that. And I think that all I've seen is the one estimate. We I don't a, know if there's only one person in the area that does it. We have a cot in here they can say it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I bet there's an Airbnb somewhere that's more real cheap. Yeah. Okay. So I'm good with that. Joyce? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll keep it as recommended. Yeah. Um, Article 29, this is the acceptance of extension to pop of the 300 so odd feet to pop railroad. Um, this would this would um, allow residents to accept the layout of the select board and also authorize the select board to acquire the easements okay. in the street. Um, so this is an article that's um, 
what was recommended by the assistant assessor originally, but it's now recommended by the Board of Assessors after its meeting last night. Um, it has to accept the provisions of General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, Cost 54, which establishes an exemption from taxation for personal property with an assessed value of less than $5,000. And the reason we're saying uh, no to this small amounts of money is that it costs uh, a lot to collect them. Or is there a I think that's, I believe that's, that's the reason of. Uh, it's more trouble than it's worth. Is that what's, right? What's, that the, right. what's the total that we're going to be um, turning away? 400 and Six, something. Four hundred. Okay. Sixty something dollars. Is that right? Yeah, something. Yeah. And and if all of a sudden that number grows exponentially, we can revisit it, correct? Yeah, you can repeal it. Right. Right. Okay. Um, this is the this is the ten year recycling contract. I guess it's a ten, but it's mm -hmm. subject to a five year extension. That that uh, Frank Fortino was talking about. Yeah. Um, because the current one that we have with the the Springfield facility is is. Will end, yeah. And so we will not be using that Springfield facility any longer? Um, it's going to go up to a competitive bid, so good. possibly they could. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it would be great to have Fran in here to chat about recycling. Just take this opportunity to, because some of the things that we don't recycle makes no sense. And, and it's an edict from the Springfield Recycling Center, but it's not, I, I, I don't find it um, representative of other recycling places in the state. 30, so 32 and 33, these are the amendments for the um, adaptive reuse, mm -hmm. uh, converted to historic municipal religious commercial buildings. 32 is the actual text of the bylaw, 33 is in, a, in addition to the table of use. Um, in 34, right before you, you get to that, yep. Ryan, you were, you were saying something about excluding marijuana establishments. Yeah, so the play board's going to meet. Is that in here uh, somewhere? Or? No, they're going to meet on the 23rd, and they're going to discuss. Um, there's concerns that, or concerns have been expressed by some people in the community that, that this broad allowance of retail stores could mean all types of retail stores. Um, and this one of the one of these person's biggest concerns is whether that includes marijuana retail establishments, um, specifically in um, some of the buildings along Route Five. Southern part of town, and whether this would be a backdoor way to um, for um, establishments like that to, to get into um, either the AR1 where they're currently not allowed or into um, these buildings which traditionally have very little parking and small lots. Exactly. How many historic buildings are on 510 going south? I don't think it's historic. historic. They think it's the uh, Antiquarian Bookstore. Is that a historic building? That would yeah, fall under sure, yeah. this, yeah. but it's already. It was How old was that building? I think somebody told me it was nine, early 1900s. That is some commercial. It's, I believe it's some commercial. Yeah, it's some commercial. That's not the question, but it's how his, yeah. why is it historic, but okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, already, it's, a, it's a, it seemed to me it can already do retail, so this is not giving it more flexibility than it already has. It gives it flexibility from, from the, um, Parking and dimensional requirements. Yes, parking and dimensional requirements. And I'm told also what, what they didn't think about was there's actually additional uh, dimensional requirements because it's the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. So the Planning Board's going to have an amendment to um, an amendment, an amendment to, this. to this. Okay. That's going to need to happen on the floor. Okay. But, but the way this is written, I mean, it could apply to the center school. Somebody could. Yeah. Purchase that for a, a retail marijuana. Then. Sure. You know, right. you could make the argument that. I did so. You know, I, and, and, and you know, we, the, we voted to have it. You know, our town, our town voted yeah. for that. So it's legal. I don't think. Right. But okay. Yeah. I, I talked with town council about this today. It may be problematic to say that they can't do it in certain areas. Of town. I don't know. Yeah. In his opinion, was that where there's a more specific bylaw, where there's a more specific zoning bylaw, that's typically going to trump. So sort of this generic, this general allowance of retail stores, but that's not a guarantee. Okay. Thirty-four. Okay. Thirty-four. That's the proposed short-term rental bylaw. Um, that the plan for proposed. 
35, they're just reclassifying lodging houses or boarding houses um, from a residential use to commercial use. And Article 36 is the voter submitted petition to, in support of changing the state flag in the seal of Massachusetts. Um, and I handed you out um, an article that I have time to include in this one. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that, if we go back to August 30th, 2017, there was an article on a special town meeting warrant that would, that would authorize the select board to obtain an easement over uh, the property immediately behind, uh, well, kind of immediately behind the post office, most of Caldwell's property. Um, because there was there was this idea that the parking was going to be extended, the parking lot was going to be extended back, mm -hmm. um, and we passed over the article because we were told um, by the engineer and architect that that wasn't feasible, it was too expensive, and that the parking was just going to take place on um, on the town property. Well, what happened during construction is that a lot, some of the well, if you, I think most of you are back there that that uh, the bank that they had to create, mm -hmm. which is now plant mulched and planted, um, is actually on uh, Melissa Cobble's property. Um, so that sort of stabilization bank mm -hmm. is on her property. And she's been asking um, if we would execute an easement um, so that when she sells her property, it's just everything's, everything's all straightened out. Um, so we would need we, we would need town meeting authorization for the select board to acquire that easement. Okay. okay. That's something that she's been asking All right. for a while now. Sounds like it. Any it's questions or comments before we go to accept? Uh, I asked mine as we went along. I'm good. Fred? Yeah, fine. Okay. Do okay. we uh, accept this and sign it? Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. So this is our, that's added as Article 30, and the other ones are renumbered. Oh. Okay. What, what kind of just what kind of presentations are we going to have at town meeting? You know, water doing something, water merger, finance. Um, I don't know what you. Water's I think doing. Water their, should probably. Water's doing their presentation. Do something. The whole thing. Um, it would be nice if it was a joint. Water District and Water Department presentation. I think, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. yeah, I agree. And I think, yeah, I think they want to go that way, but they've got to get someone from the Water Department to step up. Um, and um, the Planning Board is going to have to discuss it. Yeah, Planning Board only has its PowerPoint. Yeah. And Finance. Finance usually does a quick, yeah. quick presentation. Oh, or something. Worked on them at this point. Okay. okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Bye.